Remember this guy? Did you know at one point he had his very own series? Gentlemen, one of the great forgotten trilogies of gaming, Gargoyle's Quest. Damn, does it feel good to finally talk about these wonderful games. If Capcom has proven anything through these last three decades, it's that they know how to make a great action game, and they know how to start a franchise. Though they haven't always been good at keeping up on their franchises. Not everyone is a Mega Man, Street Fighter, or at least in Japan, Monster Hunter. Onimusha, Devil May Cry, Beautiful Joe have been put back in Capcom's vault like Disney cartoons, but some series like Gargoyle's Quest weren't even given a chance to be ran into irrelevancy. But it's not like Capcom didn't try. All three games in the Gargoyle's Quest trilogy were incredible near masterpieces that despite this never found the audience they deserved. Like the recent Mega Man Legends, it was killed off before its time, but this gives the Gargoyles Quest trilogy an incredible batting average, making it very technically Capcom's most consistent franchise ever. Sorry, Beautiful Joe, your subpar spin offs tarnished your rep. And Maximo, I know you win greatest hits, but come on, you only had two titles. Now, you might be saying, what about Phoenix Wright? And you would be right, but I give the point to Gargoyles Quest because that series is a little more varied. The Gargoyles Quest games each came out on different systems, and each time they were benchmark titles in terms of genre-bending gameplay, graphics, and presentation. They each have their flaws, but still come highly recommended because they not only represent their respective systems' state-of-the-art, but they've all aged extremely well and are required games for any action fan with even the faintest interest in the old school. <laughs> The titular Gargoyle in Gargoyle's Quest is Firebrand, also sometimes known as the Red Blaze. Yes, I said Red Blaze, we'll talk about that in a minute. Like Bionic Commando, the Gargoyle's Quest games are typical 2D action platformers with a twist. By tapping the A button in the air, Firebrand can hover and latch onto walls, so anything is a platform if you can reach it. As you progress, you grow stronger with new attacks and increased jump and wing strength, giving you that all-important badass feel. Firebrand is swift, but his attacks are limited. The game expects you to adapt to the environment and use it to your advantage. And like any well-made game with a gimmick, each level is designed around this gimmick. Levels become like puzzles with fresh obstacles and enemies to overcome. Some levels basically have no enemies at all, while others basically don't have floors. Each of the games has their variation on this setup, especially the third one making sure that even through three whole games, this simple concept never becomes stale. Gargoyle's Quest is of course a spin-off of Ghosts and Goblins. I'm sure we all remember this prick, if you are lucky enough to even get that far. The series started on the Game Boy and finished on the Super NES. Unfortunately, not a lot of people know about this third game because Capcom rebranded it Demon's Crest. All three games have minor, non-linear RPG elements that help give the game a different pace and a grander feel. Instead of jumping from level to level, you'll explore a large world, making your conclusion feel all the more hard-fought and satisfying. It's getting hard to talk about these games without getting ahead of myself because they're all just different enough from each other. So you know what? Enough of the introduction. Let's dive in. Before we do that, I have to pull an old friend out of retirement. Yo, Ben! Hey, what's going on, man? Hey man, uh, remember like four years ago when we talked about doing a Gargoyles Quest retrospective video together? Oh yeah, I was really excited about that. Right, well, I'm finally doing that now, and uh, you should review Gargoyles Quest for the Game Boy. But I don't do game reviews anymore. Yeah, I know, but we talked about it for so long, it, it just wouldn't feel right to do it without you. But I can't do that. Like, I retired, man. I don't want to pull a Jay-Z or a Mike Jordan, you know. Okay, you're not Jay-Z. And also, come on, for me, for old time's sake? All right, let's give it a shot. Hell yeah, all right, well, take it away, Ben. Welcome to a special edition of Video Game Takeout. As some of you may know, I'm Ben. I used to make a show called Video Game Takeout. And now I'm going to do what I did then. So here we go. 
Released in the summer of 1990 when the Game Boy was barely a year old, Gargoyle's Quest was an ambitious little action gem. Many early Game Boy games were either half-assed puzzle games that were trying their best to mimic Tetris, watered-down NES ports, or simple action games that tended to lack depth. Gargoyle's Quest, on the other hand, went for something bigger, and it's one of the best aged games on the system because of it. Tight controls, detailed and well-designed sprites, fantastic music, and a long, genre-bending adventure that's hindered more by the Game Boy's limitations than by its age, Gargoyle's Quest remains one of the best games on the system, despite its early launch. The biggest compliment to the first Gargoyle's Quest game that I can give is how ambitious and fully realized it was. The flying and wall grappling mechanics rewrote the same book on action platforming that Capcom pretty much wrote not too long before this with Mega Man 2. It's a simple concept that's used very effectively, and it's just as much fun now as it was 20 years ago. I'm always surprised at how few platform games really try something different like this, rather than just copying the Sonic or Mario molds. But that's not Gargoyle's Quest's only innovation. Taking a page from RPGs, Gargoyle's Quest also features an overworld filled with towns, random battles, and caves to explore. No linear progression like Castlevania or stage select like in Mega Man. If anything, the game borrows most heavily from the Dragon Quest series. And rest assured, it really is a quest. The levels are tough, but usually the good kind of tough. Despite the fact that there are only six main stages, the game has surprising depth. I suppose it can feel a little short, but it's so fun and challenging that you'll probably still need to keep track of those passwords just because it's a bit daunting to beat the game all in one sitting. The music is well composed and memorable like most Capcom games of the time, and the sprites are big and detailed, giving the universe of the ghoul's realm personality and style. When it's firing on all cylinders, it's definitely a blast, but its innovation is not without its drawbacks. The dialogue is delivered in a weird, staggered way. It builds character and I guess it's fitting given the game's setting, but it's kind of annoying. Secondly, despite its best shot at full-on RPG status, it does sort of fall short. Most of the towns are super small and cramped, so while the game does offer an open world, there isn't much to explore. There are a few vials hidden off the beaten path, but not much else on the road less traveled. Random encounters are another slight problem. Let's face it, random battles on the overworld are not well regarded even in actual RPGs, but here they take on a different form. They're more like small platforming stages. Fortunately they aren't terribly hard and they can usually be cleared in less than a minute, so I suppose it could be worse, but they definitely get old after a while. The game's balance is also an issue at times. Some of the hardest levels are the early ones because you only have two hit points the game has, at times, some super bad slowdown. It can be annoying, but more often than not, I found it helped me out when the screen got really crowded. That said, when the game is running at normal speed, the controls are excellent. Ultimately, there isn't much more to say about Gargoyle's Quest. Sometimes innovation comes at a price, and while the game does have flaws, many of them were addressed in the later sequels. While technically this is the worst of the three games in the series, it did set a good foundation especially for its complexity on a relatively simple platform. Gargoyle's Quest is sort of on the pricey side for a Game Boy game at around $10 to $15 online, but it is available on the 3DS Virtual Console for a couple of bucks if you have that option, and it's definitely worth your cash either way. I agree, man. Gargoyle's Quest is a really solid game. It actually holds up. Yeah, I really like it. It's a lot of fun. It's weird, though. On, on the cover, uh, Firebrand is green. But throughout the entire game, everyone calls him red, and every other game, he's red. Yeah, I don't know why they do A lot of Game Boy games do that, where the color of the person on the cover, whoever did the art, you know, they weren't familiar with the character or whatever, and they made him incorrectly colored, like Kirby is white on the Game Boy game. Doesn't this game predate, like, all the Game Boy Mega Man games? Yeah, I think it came out before all of them, and, uh, you know, in general, I'd say it's better than most of them. Maybe not, maybe not five, but the rest of them. You know, I haven't played five in a really long time, but I, I wasn't. Sh- I, I I own one, two, and three, and they're they're pretty good Mega Man games. But I, I honestly, I think Gargoyles Quest is like a way better game. Yeah, I really liked it. And and also like with the Ducktales games, I think it predates the Ducktales games, which again were pretty good, but you know they were just watered down NES titles and yeah all of the other ones that Capcom made the DuckTales and the Mega Mans were just like amalgamations of the you know home versions i guess 
<laughs> and yeah, I mean, Gargoyles Quest, not only did it come before all those, something totally original. Yeah, it was original. That's what made it great. Well, listen, dude, I gotta get back to reviewing the rest of these games, but uh, thanks for doing this. Do your thing. Oh, yeah, one last thing. Peace out, bitch! <laughs> That's how we end all our conversations. Anyway, Gargoyles Quest 2 for the NES. <laughs>
It sits with the best of them and perfectly complements the game's gothic aesthetic. It's yet another stunning soundtrack by Capcom. Remixers and cover bands, where you at? But before you run out and grab yourself a copy of Gargoyle's Quest 2, be aware the game does have its faults. I wish I could tell you this game was perfect, but it's not. For a game so delicately balanced, a couple of the boss fights are much harder than they ought to be. The last boss is nearly broken, with a glitchy platform in the center of the room. Often it pushes you off into a free fall into the instant death spikes below. In fact, the only way I've ever been able to beat this guy is to cheese him in this sweet spot where he can't hit you. Though the level before him is a wonderfully challenging final stretch, he's a surprisingly unpolished final boss. Also, the boss at the end of the House of Mirrors sometimes moves too quickly to be avoided and is downright cheap. He feels out of place in a game that's a much more slower pace. At one point you're tasked to head north to the desert, but someone's blocking your way saying your wings aren't strong enough. But even when you get your wing strength upgraded and you're allowed passage, this jump is really tough. I've only ever just made it. In fact, these bridge areas are a huge source of frustration. The mystery of what's directly beneath you is one of the game's biggest hazards, but usually they're just simple spikes and you can take the hit, but not over the river of fire. These bridge levels are short, but high risk because of instant death if you touch the fire. Expect to die the most on these stages. And here's a hint that's going to help you out in one of the early parts of the game. I honestly wouldn't blame you for getting frustrated and giving up with Gargoyle's Quest 2 at this point, but here's what you can do. Vials are currency, but there's nothing else in this game to spend them on except Maelstrom, which is Gargoyle's Quest's fancy word for extra life. In the second kingdom, you'll need to find the Gremlin Stick to help an ailed king. To do so, you'll have to cross a river of fire, work through one dungeon, cross another river of fire, and complete another dungeon. And if you get a game over at any point, you'll have to start all the way back at that second kingdom because this is the last place you can receive a password. No one gives you a password in the next town. Now don't be confused, you keep the items you won through game over, but you'll have to start all the way back here if you do. The solution? Go for broke with extra lives. This is the only time something like this happens in the game, and it's unfortunate it happens early on. But once you're over that hurdle, it's smooth sailing. Other than these few gripes, this game is a masterpiece. Don't let these gripes keep you from this incredible NES gem. That is unless you prefer Super Nintendo. the name fool you, Demon's Crest is actually Gargoyle's Quest 3, and from the moment you turn it on, you know you're getting a AAA Super Nintendo title. From a presentation perspective, Demon's Crest sits with the best, on probably the greatest system in the history of video games. It continues the series' trademark of beautiful graphics and music, while altering the formula for a fresh Gargoyle's Quest experience. Then throw in multiple endings in an early attempt at New Game Plus, and it's simply amazing how Capcom was able to keep this series from growing stale. Unfortunately, also like its predecessors, there's a few too many little flaws to call it an outright masterpiece. It's unquestionably one of the greatest action games on the Super Nintendo, but there's some incredibly steep competition here. The likes of Super Metroid, Super Castlevania 4, and Capcom's own Mega Man X1 best it as a total package. The game's absolutely stunning visuals come at a price of terrible slowdown. Its open-ended world was pretty unique for its time, but occasionally is poorly handled with items sometimes too well hidden. Boss battles are either extremely difficult or complete pushovers, and this new overworld map is a great change of pace but feels underdeveloped. These minor complaints aside, Demon's Crest is a stunning piece of software and a nearly flawless conclusion to an incredible series that, like I said, is technically speaking, Capcom's most consistent series ever. Demon's Crest has a lengthy introduction that's interesting enough. Again, I was never compelled to connect the dots between these games. This trilogy excelled in many places. Story was not one of them, but such was the time. One day, six elemental crests fell from the heavens, and the ghoul realm erupted into a civil war. When the dust settled, the fire demon Firebrand stood victorious with five of the crests. The final crest was held by the great demon Dragon. After a Pyrrhic victory against the Demon Dragon, this jerk phalanx cheap shots Firebrand and takes the crests for himself, becoming ruler of the Ghoul Realm. And from this intro, Demon's Crest doesn't waste any time. Push start and immediately you're fighting for your life against a giant dragon. Wait, is that the same dragon from the intro? And right after that, you're on your way to retrieving your first stolen crest. 
Between this so fucking cool intro and this awesome boss fight, Demon's Crest sets the bar very high. It's an amazing opening sequence, outdone only by... <sighs> Super Metroid. You'll notice that Firebrand and the Ghoul Realm have never looked better, and holy crap, crank that volume dial, this soundtrack is amazing. It's unfortunate that as quickly as you'll notice this game is gorgeous, you'll notice awful slowdown. Capcom went the extra mile to craft a beautiful game, but just didn't have the programming know-how to make it all run smoothly. Its haunting soundtrack isn't affected by the slowdown, so I guess it could be worse. Wing strength has been removed. Firebrand can now hover endlessly, which at first seems like a bad decision, but level design is a little different this time. Each level has multiple paths to backtrack once you've acquired new abilities. Each of the level's chunks are pretty small, but the levels themselves are actually longer than ever. To support this change over Part 2, the overworld is no longer kin to RPGs. This time the Ghoul Realm has more in common with Metroid and Actraiser than Final Fantasy. Furthermore, instead of bulking up your jump or wing strength, you unlock the power of different gargoyles as you reclaim your crests. Our hero naturally has the Crest of Fire, so there are five more to collect. The main three you'll be dealing with are the Crests of Earth, Wind, and Water. The Earth Gargoyle can charge, but cannot hover. Early in the game, his attack is your strongest, but is a little more difficult to use. The Wind Gargoyle can not only hover, but fly! Jeez, about time! But cannot cling to walls. Also, since it's so maneuverable, many bosses are immune to its attacks. That's smart. And of course, the Water Gargoyle can swim underwater, but cannot hover or cling to walls. Each of the Gargoyles looks incredible. God, what a gorgeous game! Sorry. This means there's a lot of pausing and switching on the menu screen, which I've heard people complain about, but switching on the main screen was a pain in the ass in Capcom's other Super NES game, Magical Quest starring Mickey Mouse. This game is hard enough, I'll take this method. Now I mentioned this game borrows a lot from Metroid, unfortunately there's no battery backup, but I'm really sick of hearing people bitch about passwords. You know what, everyone's got a cell phone now, take a picture or just jot it down in your phone. Anyway, you'll replay the seven levels many times as you collect elemental crests. There are a bunch of things to collect, like talismans that affect your attack rate or frequency enemies will drop health, vials for potions, scrolls for spells, and health upgrades. It's important you collect as much as you can because the amount of stuff in your inventory affects the ending. Which I'd like to say is really cool, but to get the best ending and to unlock the super fun ultimate gargoyle, you have to collect every item, and finding everything is way harder than it should be. Here, I'll save you some time. You see this wall right here? This completely normal looking wall? Oh, you can swim through it! And hey, this nondescript spot on the overworld? This is where the last headbutt game is hidden. It's also most likely where your last piece of health will be. I couldn't find anybody in the game who actually tells you about it, so I guess you're just supposed to accidentally find it? Some of these items are just too well hidden. This wasn't the case with Mega Man X. A new addition to Demon's Crest are the spells and potions you can buy at stores, which sounds cool, right? Well, most of them don't work or are useless. The hold and shock spells never did anything for me, and why would I want any other potion than the full health one? The resurrection potion brings you back to life when you die, which is cool, but with only like 5 HP. It's pretty much useless after the first level. Now this isn't a huge problem, but this game sets the bar so high, I can't help but scratch my head when Capcom includes spells that don't do anything, and potions that are useless. The new overworld map is cool, I mean, who doesn't love some shoehorn mode 7? Like, every Super Nintendo game has it, I'm not even kidding. But Firebrand is kind of hard to control. If you swoop down and overshoot your target, you can't simply fly backwards or turn around quickly. And mode 7 aside, having an overworld like this just seems like an odd choice. Capcom made a lot of changes with this third game, but this is the only one that just doesn't feel right. Okay, enough petty nitpicking. Here's the big one. Demon's Crest's bosses are just unbalanced. Some boss battles are either super hard or just take forever. Sometimes these bosses were such a pain, I felt like I had missed something, like an item or an upgrade. Like they shouldn't be this hard. So I'd skip ahead to another level, which is to this game's credit, and I'd come back with a better crest or more health, and suddenly they're so easy, I feel like I'm cheating all of a sudden. Like I accidentally sequence broke the game. I don't know, in a game so well produced, this rookie mistake really stood out for me. Now, to be clear, these gripes are only what keep Demon's Crest from being that, like, nearly flawless masterpiece, like, say, Super Metroid of the first Mega Man X. These gripes by no means make this a bad game, but it's just not quite that masterpiece it should have been. There's a lot of steep competition on this system. Some of the greatest and most influential action games ever came out on the Super Nintendo. And Demon's Crest does belong on that list of top 10 greatest action games on the Super Nintendo. But its place is unfortunately at the bottom of that list.
Gargoyles Quest 1 is on the Virtual Console, and like Ben said, it's totally worth it. For the other two, you'll have to spring for physical carts. Both Gargoyles Quest 2 and Demon's Crest are so good, but both have little flaws. It's impossible to recommend one over the other. But, well, when I made this video at least, Gargoyles Quest 2 was about 20, 30 bucks cheaper, so I guess buy that one, but really own both of these games. Now, I was a little harder on Demon's Crest because the competition was way more fierce on the Super Nintendo than on the NES. There was a port of Gargoyles Quest 2 for the Game Boy, but it only came out in Japan, so I wasn't able to play it for this review. And now, there's one last thing to address here, and I'm sure some of you are wondering why I haven't brought up Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3. Well, our boy Firebrand is in it! But man, how come they went with box art goofy instead of cutscene badass? Come on, this is our boy Firebrand. But whatever, I'll take it. Anyway, let me just say this. <clears throat> hey Capcom, so, you've rejuvenated Bionic Commando in both download and physical form. You've brought back and then killed off Mega Man, I'm sure you'll figure that out. You've released Gargoyles Quest 1 on Virtual Console, and you put Firebrand in Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3. Just remake Gargoyles Quest already. These games are fucking brilliant. Do you know how little work you'd have to do? Shit, just do an HD version of Demon's Crest. Fix the slowdown, tweak the bosses, and boom, money. I'm calling it Capcom, just announce it already. Well, gang, time to raise my glass and say goodnight. So, let me just say this. If they do remake the Gargoyles Quest games, please don't email me. I will probably already know about it. Cheers. Mm. And if you'll excuse me, I have a score to sell. Let's roll with it. Let's see what happens. Neither of us are actors. This is going to go well. How dare you? I am a thespian. I actually am. I have a card and everything. How dare you? You, sir, have offended me and my honor. <laughs> Slap with the glove. <laughs> okay. We can be stupid all day, but let's get this done. Hey, Ben. Hey, hey, hey. Um. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> Oh my god, everyone stop calling me right now. Fuck. I don't want to answer my phone. Shut up. Blowing up the phone. They are. They're blowing it up. Man. Everyone wants a piece of Ben Hall. They do. But there's only so much Ben to go around. Gotta ration it. <laughs>